after in 1857 we have lost 80% of geography of territory right from Afghanistan to Siam to uh, uh, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, Tibet, all these are part of Bharat. In fact, Kashmir's king degree includes Tibet in his, uh, in his uh, what we call uh, designation. So if we feel that we are still around, it is because the areas have been cut off, we are still 80%. Even at this majority, wherever you look at it, where Hindu gets into minority, the area becomes alien to India. Look at Kashmir, look at Northeast, Look at Kerala, what's happening? Look at Bengal, what is happening? So it's a lurking danger. So this Ganga Jamni Tehzeeb basically remains a Hindu Tehzeeb because what is Jamni? That is also Hindu. So there is nothing new that was taught to Bharat during all these years that we did not already have. So to understand that this is our culture entity, my, this is what our culture is, this is what our nation is, this is what we call Hindu Rashtra. It is not nation state, nation state remains secular, nation state, the kings of any religion always allowed people to follow their own faith and they never impose their faith on others. So that is our concept of Hindu Rashtra. Because Hindu Rashtra for India, as per Indian thinking, is a national cultural concept. It is not a, st a nation state. Uh, subject is very big, uh, 93 year old institution. Hai. Uh, so to put all the aspects of uh, RSS into a 45 minute talk is very difficult. I may speed up in between. I am sorry to, so I can complete the agenda which at least what I want to uh, you know, uh, discuss or share with you. I try to cover every aspect. The idea of this presentation was the basis of my book, then the basis of my book became uh, make this uh, presentation a little more bigger and a uh, lot of questions used to come up. So nobody had done a different way of presentation on RSS. Now it has become a standard part of IIDL Rama Malke Prabodhini, this particular presentation. But I make the changes depending on the topic. So today it's about uh, demystifying RSS as we understand. Just to give an idea how big the RSS is, there are about 60,000 daily gatherings, which you call daily shakhas. There are about 17,000 weekly gatherings. There are about 8,400 uh, monthly gatherings. If I consider 10 people uh, present in each shakha, I mean every day at least 10 people in each shakha, sometimes we find 5, sometimes we find 50. Then there are about 6 lakh people who every day pray to the motherland. And each, each uh, shakha has about 100, minimum 100 people on the list which you call gut and part. If you look at those numbers, about 7 million people every day are connected to RSS. And if you look at other, uh, other programs, which I come later on the next slide, and uh, if you look at Seva Kare, by which people are connected not with RSS directly, but with its activities, there are about 80 lakh beneficiaries of these programs, where about 1.7 lakh uh, programs of social service are running small and big. This does not include disaster management, because that's a topical program. It is not a, re a regular program. There are a number of associate organizations, we know these names, but if you look at them, ABP is number one in its field. Anvasi Kalashram is the nightmare of all the missionaries because the reason they are attacked very often is because they have been able to stall the conversions and they have been able to bring new kind of consciousness. Another important point is Anvasi Kalashram and other organizations working in tribal areas don't force you to become Hindu the way we look at Hinduism. We just say go back to your roots and they are very happy. Now there is an indigenous movement in Northeast which is trying to revive its roots because they realize after 100 years of being Christians, they have lost their roots, they have lost their recognition, their own traditions. So that is what we do and a lot of work for their upliftment. Bharti Mazur Sangh started in 1955. It is number one now. It was a field where communist, uh, communist uh, dominated one time. Vishwindu Parishad began in 64 and I will come to its program later on. And so the largest Hindu organizations across the world and there is Saraswati Shishu Mandir. Again a pain for communists, they want to shut it down every time something happens, MP wakes up and tries to shut down these schools. And there are about uh, 30,000 such schools. Seva Bharati is an uh, umbrella organization of various uh, Seva programs which are conducted by different people, different organizations. And uh, then there is Vidya Bharati which is an umbrella organization of various schools and colleges run by RSS inspired people. And there is Ekal Vidyala, which is the latest of the block and it has about 80,000 single teacher students who train the students, teach the students at any time suitable to the students. Koi charvaha hai, koi gopalak hai, jis, jaisa time mila, aisa padhate hai wo, peed ke niche, room ke andar, with minimum requirements, minimum resources, 
and this again has become a big issue for uh, for the people now even punjab khalistan has started criticizing it jammu kashmiri people are very uh, they have huge issues there are 250 ekal vidyalaya and shishu mandir is running in uh, jammu kashmir also so if you look at them there may be around 1 crore active citizens who are linked with rss view point at a national level so there are around 20 million people today who are closely linked with rss and its various programs and there are other small organizations which are created in the own field there is sanskrit bharati we know that a lot of interest has come into sanskrit and one of the key reason is sanskrit bharati run by a ex pracharak jammu shastri ji who has gone into the idea that if he can speak sanskrit easily without following the typical structured approach it will become popular and it has become very popular there are some sanskrit sambhashan works where people come to learn sanskrit speaking sanskrit in just 7 days and we have heard of two villages are turned totally sanskrit speaking one in mp one in karnataka that is also due to sanskrit bharati the other small organizations there is uh, out of this important one is itihas sankalan samiti which went into mode of rewriting history or rather representing history beginning with uh, search of saraswati river one of the most important discoveries and now they are working on local histories so each area in our country has its own culture its own traditions uh, so all of that we are trying to connect through itihas sankalan samiti Kushth Nivara Sangh is one of the oldest seva programs of uh, RSS, uh, run somewhere in 1949 in MP, and latest one is Saksham, which looks after the uh, various kind of uh, divyang jinka Modi ji kehte hain, various kind of physically handicapped, right from uh, any kind of uh, you know disability. So it's the latest of the block, and there is Rashtra Sevika Samiti, uh, which about one lakh regular women members, and lot more. They also run many social service organizations. So there are a uh, 28. national level organizations that are under the umbrella of rss affiliates and there are a lot of local organizations which don't even fall into this category how the organization is structured uh, it starts from the local shakha where you see people playing on the ground 10 20 people playing doing various exercises and then there is a village level committee then there is town or city level committee then there is district level committee state then zone or kshetra uh, as we call it and national committee so this is how the structure is made and all the information that is gathered goes from the lowest level so field level intelligence that rss has nobody has in fact that what is happening on the ground what we call typically ear to the ground that is there and uh, the uh, major office bearers are actually elected not many people know every 3 years there is election so sir kareva who is actually the executive head of rss uh, who actually runs the organization is elected by the akhil bharatiya pratinidhi sabha which in turn is elected by local district level bodies where a few uh, regular very old samsaks who are there for long time they come and come together select uh, elect those people and they go to the akhil bharatiya pratinidhi sabha that pratinidhi sabha selects the uh, kendriya karyakarini and kendriya karyakarini is where the decision making starts uh, and when the decision is taken it flows from top to down there are some decision which are implemented locally there are some decisions which are Uh, let us say ram janm bhoomi it was implemented right from the top where is okay shila pujan so the decision was taken at the top it went down to the village level and it was followed followed accordingly so if you look at it there is totally democratic way of looking uh, the running the organization one more important point that will come again again is decision through consensus uh, there is this is the only organization which has not split in 93 years no parallel organizations no rebellions if somebody's nap goes out without feeling unhappy or bad mouthing anybody comes back after some years maybe some maybe doesn't come back but otherwise organization remains because decision till it is taken by consensus is not taken so there are decisions which are put into cold uh, cold storage till everybody agrees to it it makes the thing slow sometimes you feel why rsa doesn't take fast decision because it has to take everybody along that is the key to success of this organization who founded the organization uh, there is a story that in uh, 89 in uh, uh, sorry in summer in 60 the, some Cong- congressman asked dattopan thengdi is you know one of the key and very critical member of rss uh, one of the first generation rss pracharaks uh, who is your founder he said dr hed gevar he said who knows him look at nehru everybody knows him so then a communist member told the person that it is not uh, who remembers a person now it is the shadow that the person has on the history that decides who is the greatest person so in 89 nehru had a centenary which was celebrated only by the government 
and we had a celebration for Dr. Hedgeva Centenary and we started 1000 Seva projects across India and people participated. So that's the importance of this person. He was hardly known by, uh, uh, by anybody. He took part in revolutionary activities during his uh, medical college days. He was part of Congress uh, agitations. He, was, he went to jail twice. And uh, he saw many things. So ultimately, he decided the core of historic weakness is lack of unity among Hindus, that lack of discipline and uh, pride in his nationhood, which is defined by ancient Hindu roots. So unless we reorganize the Hindu society, we try to revive their pride in their own culture and their country, nothing will work. British may go, but ultimately the new government will come will also be following the same trap. So our weakness is Hindu society's weakness. If it draws, we have to resolve the problems, we must strengthen the Hindu society. So it was not against anybody, but it was for improving the lot of the Hindu society, breaking through regionalism, casteism, its uh, poor rituals and all that. So it was founded at the age of 35 after having done his work in Congress party, in uh, 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 revolutionary activities. And he, uh, interestingly, in 1920, when he was a uh, member of the organizing committee of uh, Congress uh, Adivation in Nagpur, he presented a resolution which talked about complete freedom and also uh, helping other colonized nations to break the imperialism. That was the resolution. It was rejected because at that time, Congress was only looking at dominion status for uh, the nation. And it was, of course, run by uh, Hume and all those people. This decision was taken by Congress 30, uh, 10 years after that. And that was also celebrated by Dr. Hedgevar. So people who believe that Dr. Hedgevar had, uh, you know, jealousy about Congress or Communist Party, that's all wrong. So this was his background. These are the uh, RSS chiefs. Uh, incidentally, I'm writing a book on evolution of RSS based on these people. And uh, there was uh, Madhav Shadashiv Godwalkar known as Guruji. He was not Guruji of RSS. He was called Guruji by students in Bhar uh, Banaras in the university because of his wonderful nature and helping everybody in uh, learning. And he was the longest serving uh, chief. Uh, he was chief for 33 years. He, uh, on during those days, uh, days without aeroplane, without any other facility, he used to travel third class and he used to do two parikramas of uh, Bharat every year. So he did about 66 travels across India during his lifetime. Two of them when he was already stuck with cancer. Then there is uh, Madhukar Dattata Devras, all we call Balasaheb Devras. Uh, who, is, uh, who is taken as one of the strongest reformist voice in RSS and uh, he is supposed to be a, a, a splitting image of Dr. Hedgevar by many. Uh, then was Rajendra Singh called Professor Rajendra Singh called Raju Bhaiya, who was from Banaras Hindu University, uh, sorry, Prayag University, head of the department there in physics. Uh, Sudarshan ji, a, a Tamil brought up in uh, Karnataka but actually born and brought up in Madhya Pradesh. So he was a polyglot, or nearly knew nine languages. And uh, Dr. Mohan Bhagat, as we know, currently we see him every time. Uh, what is the ideology of RSS? So this is, I have deliberately taken it from the constitution of RSS. I have not, I am not saying anything. This is part of the first page of constitution of RSS. So I'll just read the aim and objective. The final aim is to organize and weld together the various diverse groups within Hindu Samaj and to revitalize and rejuvenate the same on the basis of its dharma and sanskriti so that it may achieve an all round development of Bharatvarsh. This is the objective of RSS. For that, whatever is required, it does. So if you see the preamble, I talked about a society which is always split on region, language, caste, faith. So that was to be removed. Glory in the past by looking at future, not living in past and bringing about regeneration of Hindu Samaj. And now what is Hindu Rashtra? People say, you want Hindu Rashtra? Banana chate. Always say, Hindu Rashtra is hai, banana nahi hai. Because Hindu Rashtra for India, as per Indian thinking, is a national cultural concept. It is not a, a, a nation state. What we do is we mix up this nation state with the nation state that West has. The so concept of nation state came in the West 200 years back, where the nation was controlled by the state and the, when state withered, the nation withered. When a king died, the, the whole state collapsed, whether it's Greek or whether it's Greek or Roman empires. So, but in India, we realized so many kings came, so many rulers came, but Indian society always survived because its concept of nationalism is based on geographical, cultural identity. If you look at the record of our nation, right from Chanakya to Kalidas, Chanakya talking of 4 BC, 
Kalidas 1800 or 2000 years back, they had already defined Bharat as a nation from Indian Ocean to Himalaya, from Kamrup to Afghanistan, Kandhar. So this was part of our history. In fact, Chanakya talked about how many yojanas their nation is. There are shlokas in uh, Purana. Uh, there is a, also definition of this particular thing in Vedas also. So although there are very many kingdoms, in our mind we are very clear about what is our nation. If you look at various festivals that we, uh, we celebrate, Vijayadashmi is celebrated across India with various names. People, what happens in newspaper, we say Assam is celebrated something. <coughs> Gujarati celebrates something, we don't realize it is same, same thing celebrated in different way. So there is a unit, celib unity celebrated in different ways, but there is a thread of unity. Navavarsh, if you look at it, right from Kashmir, Navre to South, from Gujarat to Assam, there is only one Panchang, one uh, calendar. You have uh, Kumbh Mela, we saw recently, Kumbh Mela is celebrated in four places across uh, across India and uh, every four years cycle over 12 years cycle which is called Mahakumbha. It is there for thousands of years. Nobody knows how long. There is no marketing. There is no advertisement. There is no central body. It happens. It happens wonderfully whether yogi is there or not. It will keep on happening because it's part of India's uh, psyche. People come from Ganga, from Kashi and take water to Rameshwaram. We know that. Shankaracharya built up Char Dham across four corners of India. 1800 years back, so there was very clear concept of Bharat, 52 Shakti Peaks across Bharat, 12 Jyotirlings, even uh, if you look at uh, Gurudwaras, Panjpiyaras that were picked up by Guru Gobind Singh belong to four different regions of India, five regions of India. So there is clearly a cultural link between all of this, very common habits, lot of things we don't even realize. If you look at what is greatest in India, people talk of yoga, people talk of Veda, Ayurveda, people talk of Mahabharat, Gita. What is all this? It's typically Hindu. So it is not necessary to build an artificial construct when we know India is one. And if at all somebody's enriched, the, enriched ourselves, we know, suppose there is what you call, you know, uh, Makmalka jacket. You put up, you put some flower there. It doesn't become flower. It becomes a Makmalka kurta. So this Ganga Jamni Tehzeeb basically remains a Hindu Tehzeeb. Because what is Jamni? That is also Hindu. So there is nothing new that was taught to Bharat during all these years that we did not already have. So to understand that this is our culture entity, my, this is what our culture is, this is what our nation is, this is what we call Hindu Rashtra. It is not nation state, nation state remains secular, nation state, the kings of any religion always allowed people to follow their own faith and they never impose their faith on others. So that is our concept of Hindu Rashtra. Why do we need to organize Hindu society? Because people say, Sabadiya chal raha hai, 80% percent log hai, humare aaj bhi, itne saal ho gai, itne hajaaron saal ho gai, hum to amar hai, kuch baat hai ki masti mitti nahi hamari. Lekin masti to mitti rahi hai. After in 1857, we have lost 80% of geography, of territory. Right from Afghanistan to Siam to Myanmar, Sri Lanka, Tibet, all this is part of Bharat. In fact, Kashmir's king degree includes Tibet in his, uh, in his uh, what we call uh, designation. So if we feel that we are still around, it is because the areas have been cut off, we are still 80%. Even at this majority, wherever you look at it, where Hindu gets into minority, the area becomes alien to India. Look at Kashmir, look at Northeast, look at Kerala, what's happening, look at Bengal, what is happening. So it's a lurking danger. If we have to realize, unless the Hindu society unites, and sees to it that we have to keep this country as one, this nation as one, we will have serious problems. We have seen that even the so-called secular nations like Indonesia, now yesterday there was news that uh, Muslims have taken out procession, they will not allow a Hindu temple to be built in Indonesia in a particular place. But Indonesia celebrates and it, is pride, it takes pride in its culture, which is Hindu, and they are Muslims. So this is we are talking about, their faith may be different, your way of worship may be different, but culture remains Hindu, the way I represent many, many, many peculiarities. So if, if we have to survive as a nation, if we have to give this message to the world that we, what we call Sarves Bhavantu Sukhina, we talk of Ekam Sat with Prabhuda Vadanti, we talk of pluralism, we talk of you know, respect to other faiths and so many other things. If this is to be saved, then Hindu civilization has to be saved. Only then we can pass on the message to the world that we are, we are giving you something which will help world overcome its differences and its uh, various issues. 
so this universal brotherhood will rely uh, re, uh, you know revive and survive only if hindu society survives as h s shishadri or one of sarkar ever said that diversity is like leaves flowers and fruits that grow out of tree but the sap that nurtures all these diverse elements comes from the root of the tree that sap is the blood life blood or diverse looking tree the tree is bharat and sap is hindu way of life and if sap dries the tree also dries and looking at what we say that kuch ho nahi sakta so will durant say that islamic conquest of india is probably the bloodiest story of story in history it's a discouraging tale for its evident moral in the civilization is a precious good whose delicate complex of order and freedom culture and peace can be at any moment be overthrown by barbarians invading from without or multiplying within that is the key solution that is the key issue whenever a society has degraded whenever it's broken up it is because we have reached a certain level of sophistication and then somebody comes with really wild ideas and whole thing collapses because we are not ready for it what are the features of rss i have not discussed many interesting uh, you know things uh one thing i always i enjoy telling we know that if we ladies go to buy mar- if we go to vegetable market not the new supermarkets a bunny always put something additionally after weighing it put something else and the lady says ko jhunga to dal do this jhunga word is everywhere in in indian languages all regional languages and this concept is only in india nowhere else so you, you what is the th- what is the thinking thinking is if there is something goes wrong let it go on my side the mistake should not be on the customer side we are the only ones who worship the raju who worship tools of implement who seek forgiveness of the of the land when we uh, when we dig it so the bhumi pujan we call is actually is not some hocus pocus it is our way of conveying to the mother earth that we are sorry they were digging you up this for our, our good and this is the kind of thinking we have for nature and there are a lot of things about hindu dharma we talk about we talk of uh, rebirth we talk karma any faith born out of india i have so many common themes so what is the novel feature of rss basically it's a man making machine there is a concept of daily gathering and uh, there is a issue, uh, there is a feeling that i should must con- uh, contribute something with tan man dhan body spirit and mind so begins with one hour coming together in the shakha it grows slowly the uh, the worker gets very involved he starts giving two hours three hours he gives whole life there are thousands of people who are given eight years ten years whole life to rss work or any the social cause there's a pracharak who came out of the regular rss pracharak he is working in jabua but is still dedicating whole of his life for what a gener- what a generation in jabua and then every activity that we we do we pay out of pocket there is no subsidy there is no sponsorship for anything the rss does neither from government nor from private people and all the festivals that, that, that rss celebrates none of them is birthday of any leader none of them is religious so it's very important to understand that we don't celebrate religious uh, festivals all the we call ourselves uh, Uh, a body of hindu people but we call it rashtriya swayamsevak sang not hindu swayamsevak sang and we also don't do any birthday celebration or any great uh, we celebrate shivaji's raja abhishek when he became the first hindu king after hundreds of years we celebrate that because that is the spirit of kshatriya that he uh, woke up in the people's mind but we celebrate jayanti of shivaji with other people but is not part of our regular uh, uh, rss festivals and we take everybody along every person of every quality good or bad is part of us it's like you know that with, uh, that uh, ayurved student who goes to jungle to find anything is not useless he finds nothing is useless similarly in rss any person lame blind well built illiterate literate everybody is welcome and the person has to be used according to quality so there is a marathi saying ahe tasa ghayacha pahije tasa ghadvaycha means you take a person as the person is then mold the person according to the requirement so this is the key to the way we are able to mold simplest people very normal people very normal human beings into extraordinary people who run wonderful organizations who run wonderful seva projects who conduct huge programs who are nothing but very normal in normal life who have no extraordinary properties who are not very brilliant but they are able to do wonderful work and basically con- commitment to the organization is what gives anybody a particular space in rss there is no bhai pati chawat there is no favor there is no uh, references ki bhaiya isko kuch bana do a person works the person's work is seen and he grows 
and it has always been an orthodox approach. The Delhi Shaka itself was unorthodox. It was never done anywhere. It has not been tried again. Sanjay Gandhi tried once failed because it requires a lot of dedication to do this kind of work. And also this idea of bringing to other people and this is the organization which is all the Hindu organization which is not built on religiosity. It is not built on spiritualism. The first time an organization which came up for the material labeling of Hindu society, whether it's freedom, because the original oath of RSS talked of freedom of India in 1985, which was changed in 1947, and talks about well being. Uh, there is Param Vaibhavanya Tume Tattva Rashram ki, I want to take this Rashtra to the Param Vaibhav. So, this is the kind of thing that we don't see actually because. This is the key and every time there is a challenge, RSS changes its way of working, adds new parameters, adds new bodies, adds new organizations, changes way. There was only one thing that was daily shakha. It became morning, evening, morning, uh, morning, evening, night shakha. Then the weekly shakha was introduced, then monthly shakha was introduced. Every time there is some new thing. IT people can't come every day. There is an IT shakha which started in Bangalore and running at many places. And what is physical manifestation? Here you have one hour shakha. There are very time bound programs, there are physical programs, there are intellectual programs, there are poems, storytelling sessions and one hour is uh, divided so precisely that every minute is counted. So that is why you will find all RSS people very particular about time, very particular about time management and through those small issues, smallest things, we are able to inculcate various, various cultural and uh, characteristics of people, mold their character get that feeling of uh, brotherhood in them, get their feeling of sacrifice for, the, uh, for society into this. So this team building happens very slowly, it's kind of family affair. There is a close bond between the teacher and the student, students themselves play together, come together, They're very simple things. In fact, when Satyagraha happened in 48 after Gandhi assassination, Nehru said, what will you do? That was the kind of feeling that people had, that these people are not the people, they play, they play, they play, they play, they play, they play. But that gaane gaane wale, khelne kudne wale people could save people in Pakistan, could save people in uh, Jammu Kashmir, save the land itself and every war they were there. So that spirit is from this daily shakha. And we also see that this kind of moral education and physical education is given by many countries through their schools itself. But unfortunately our schools there is no such education, there is no moral education allowed because they are secular. There is no hardly any physical education because we don't want to have any compulsion on the poor students and we don't have any kind of value inculcation. And I asked uh, one of the first generation pracharas during 75 emergency, time was a lot. And we were also thinking that in college, we were going to Shakha, we were bored, we were going to college, we were going to go to the evening, we were going to go to So I asked him, why this kind of Shakha in our place, you know, there is no Shakha anywhere in the world. He, he explained all this, that why it is being done, because this is lacking our education. And he said the day we are able to do this uh, practices of inculcating patriotism, discipline and pride in the nation through education system, RSS will not be required. And he says RSS is an artificial formation because of this requirement. So how do we create this kind of uh, making human beings? Everything is done through games, humor, enjoyment. We build, we, uh, the person is built from a person coming what you call, you know, every day just comes for game, then is made into a team leader, what you call Gatnak, looking after 8-10 people, meeting their parents, talking to them, looking after their education and all that. Then they become teachers, what we call Ganeshiksha, who take games and physical activities. Then he becomes head of a particular shakha, then he becomes head of a particular area. So this way, the way the person works, slowly the person rises and each and every activity is so minutely observed. In when we do the daily, uh, well, when we do this particular camp or we do a, a festival or so we call it, right from where to keep the chapel to how the flag will be hoisted, where the fence will be kept, who will take the sankhya, who will do what, everything is so minutely planned. So size of activity doesn't matter anymore. It is just the way we do it that slowly the person learns to look at the finest points of any particular program and is able to conduct it at the biggest level. Even when you have 1 lakh uh, people attending a camp, there is no outside help, there is no specialist architect, nobody. A Swayam Sahib will dig the toilets, he will also make the work in kitchen and also do physical program. So this is the level of training that a person goes through and basically there is a lot of lecture, more of emotional quotient creation where a person looks at superior, looks at how the person works and that is the example set by that. But the person, we always say that we like to 
you know, are inspired by people rather than just by books and by lectures. So that is how a person is involved, that a person looks at his teacher, his pracharak, at his seniors, and he gets inspired to do something more. So it's a very simple way, what we call it could be called MBA of social leadership, the way it is conducted and we find prime ministers, cabinet ministers, head of organizations being coming out of this organization. So this is that uh, system. There is one more important aspect of RSS which is not uh, with other people, that is a Pracharak. Even Samiti has Pracharikas. Pracharak is a full time, fully dedicated RSS person who takes no salary, no honorarium, just his cost is covered and he stays in people's home or, or in offices. All the time is working only for RSS. So he may give two or three years or he may give like. And there are smaller projects, six months, five months also people go, that is called Vistarak. So this person is the backbone of RSS work because this person has no other condition. He can, he can be sent anywhere. He has no choice. He can be sent to any organization. He has no choice. He has dedicated himself to the organization. So this is the kind of way the person travels, the person grows. Rajuvaya's famous story, he was a Pracharak, he was also a professor in uh, Prayag University. He used to pre prepare his lectures sitting in the train in the night. He would come in Dhuti Kurta with a jhola when he went to class and attended the class, gave the lecture and went, went back home. So that is the way dedication of the person develops. Coming to other aspects of uh, RSS, because the basic structure we talked about, what is the manifestation of RSS? What do we see in real life? So Dattopan Thing used to show that there is something called gradual unfoldment of organization. When Dr. Hedgeva started Delhi Shaka, people asked, what are you doing? Are you playing with the kids? Kya karo ye desh ka? Finally, they realized the guy is actually getting a lot of youth. He's getting thousands of youths. Then he said, they said, what will RSS do? He said, RSS will do nothing. But Swayamsak will do everything. So as a Swayamsak gets trained in RSS, the person is supposed to go out and do something for the society. Coming for one hour in Shaka is not RSS work. It is preparing the person. The person is supposed to go out and do something good for the society. So when as Swayamsa grew up, as they matured, as they got into more activities, they went on creating more and more organizations, more and more activities and more or things for the people. For example, RSS has proved to be second line of defense. In any war, right from 47, I talked about partition when hundreds of uh, RSS people lost their lives, saving Hindus and Sikhs. The Guruji was there in Hyderabad just one month before the actual partition took place in August 10th or 9th. Samiti uh, Mahilas were there in Karachi just, in, uh, just a week before the biggest riots broke out and there was partition and all that. And they brought many people back safely with pseudonyms and uh, secret names. Congress leaders took help of RSS to somehow escape Pakistan area. And in Kashmir, when this uh, 47, when this Pakistani Kabailis came, RSS people were there, were there with Dogra army, later with the Indian army, taking them across wherever there are paths. They themselves died fighting against the enemies and that was a sacrifice which finally saved Srinagar and finally saved Jammu Kashmir. Uh, so this kind of work and there are 62 also because of 62 support that RSS gave in spite of all the criticism of Pandit Nehru. He then decided to call RSS for 1963 parade and within a week 3000 people went there for the parade in full uniform. 65 war Guruji was the only uh, non-political leader called for the national meeting by Shastriji. And uh, all the border agitations uh, were conducted by RSS support. And there's a program called Sarhat Ko Pranam just about 7-8 uh, years back where youth were only allowed up to 10, 25 years of age. They went across India to all the borders. Whether it's, you know, uh, it's ocean border, whether it's Himalaya, whether it's Bangladesh or Pakistan border, everywhere. So thousands of young students, uh, young uh, youth went there, boys and girls and actually touched the border, sat with the local army and uh, security people, sat with the villagers to understand what they are doing and to get an idea of what we are and what our borders are and what the country is. It was highly appreciated by the people and army also. Uh, coming to what RSS has done for the social harmony, uh, like Swami Vivekananda said, uh, said, we don't believe in revolution, we believe in reformation. So all the activities we do to improve the Hindu society in terms of reforms, in terms of uh, poor rituals that we have, in the terms of uh, orthodoxy we have, whether untouchability, casteism and all that, that is done trying to convert people to their viewpoint. And uh, when Vishwindu Parishad was formed, 
for the first time when the national plenum took place in Prayag Kumbh, uh, for the first time in 10,000 years of Hindu history that we know of, there may be more years, for the first time all the Shankaracharyas, all the Matadish, all the sects, all the uh, sects like Jain, Buddha, Sikhs, everybody came together and they sat on the same level ground. Nobody is allowed any special seating, nobody is given any privilege. And they coming together after two years declared that there is no untouchability in Hindu dharma and all Hindus are born of the same mother, so they are brothers. This kind of revolutionary step for the first time taken in 1966 under the spices of Vishwanthu Parishad. And not only that, now uh, earlier uh, Sarsang Chalaks, now Dr. Bhagat has time and again said talk of one well, one temple, one cremation ground. We think it's very easy, but we can know it's very difficult. Just two days back, uh, yesterday there was news that uh, Dalit, uh, you know, backward caste uh, uh, youth sat on a horse for his wedding and there is a huge problem in Gujarat. So whatever progressive society we might consider, we still live in that typical mindset you know, warp mindset, we still believe in all these things. That is the reason this concept of one, uh, one pond, one well or one cremation ground, one temple is very big and that is what we are working towards. And uh, even in Guru Vayur it happened when there was uh, some special program, uh, leftist people try to, uh, you know, get people, uh, you know, uh, into some kind of frenzy saying that we will walk into Guru Vayur and we will, we will should be given entry at the end, the entry was not there. So Sangha people went and persuaded the trust to allow them to come in to have food together. So everywhere where it's possible, we have tried to reform the whole thing. We have got the uh, Pita Pita issues to go to SCST areas, Dalit areas to uh, go there, sit with them, take food with them. This huge change where ulti- uh, earlier Madhadis used to just sit there and uh, in his matha and people would come and post it before him and he never knew what's happening to other poor people. That has been changed with this uh, approach and huge support is given to intercaste marriage and uh, b- b- happily everybody is encouraged to go for this kind of, uh, you know, reform. So, our whole approach is very reformist. We already know disaster management everywhere. RSC people are one of the earliest ones to go. No need to, they don't, they don't even talk about that. Earlier there used to be no photograph. Now people are starting a photograph because people don't believe RSS, the media especially. I had gone to Gujarat after earthquake and there was a young boy, 12, 13 year, I think 15 year old boy. He said, I photo le lete, pehle hum kakal nahi thi, abhi hum photo lete. And he had work, done work in cyclone also. Cyclone was just two years before that cyclone had come, 1999, I think. He said, he was very difficult. He was 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 and 13, 14 year boys working in disaster management areas, sitting in the stores, working, very well organized. In fact, people used to come and dump their goods in RSS go-downs knowing that we can't manage it. So that is the kind of training people have got. And all this is done without any government support, without any uh, outside support. Admin cost is nearly zero because everybody is doing honorary work. Now slowly some expenses are incurred, but still if you compare to Ox- Oxfam or any other body like Try where the admin cost is nearly 70%. So this is one organization where admin cost is nearly zero and people spend out of their pocket. Major thrust of Seva is education, literacy, health, self-reliance, women empowerment, rural development, environment and divyang. In fact, this time's resolution was only about two things. Family, uh, what we call Kutumba, family Kutumbud uh, Bhotan, that is preserving and nurturing the family system and environment. These are two topics taken this time by Pratinidhi Sabha and I talked about physically handicapped people. To give you an idea of how many, how much work is done, so there is Seva Bharti which is directly affiliated to RSS. There are many who are affiliated but not directly with RSS. So in all, if you look at education, about 86,000 projects, this is 2017 figure. Health about 26,000-29,000, social uh, work about 30,000, self-reliance about 26,000. And total 1,70,000. This is March 7, 27. And there are in the year it was 1,64,000. So there is steady rise in these figures. And there were 911 projects for village upliftment. Now a lot of focus is given on rural development and village upliftment. And if you look at Seva projects, Kerala has the highest number, 16,911. And number of, uh, and there the Shakha number is highest. Kerala has the highest density of RSS Shakhas. 
in Tamil Nadu, number is the next highest, 12,000, but their RSS shakas are sparse compared to Kerala or any other part of India. So, we will find that Seva and Shaka, they are activities which are complement to each other at the same time. They are reach out to the society in a big way. So, and in uh, Tamil Nadu, women's self-help groups are the strongest in RSS. In fact, there are about 5,000 self-help groups that I know of. I am talking of five years back, numbers have been increasing. They had a program which looked like a huge public meeting that we see today in Modi's programs. That kind of people came together for this self-help group meeting. Uh, to just give you some milestones, small ideas about what RSS uh, has done all during all these years. Talk of 47, not repeated. And uh, 48, there was first ban when Gandhi was assassinated and uh, false charges put against RSS. There was no proof within 20 days. A CID report came saying RSS has no hand in this. But the report was suppressed and this drama went on for one and a half years. Then finally, the ban was lifted. There was a tough time for RSS because a lot of people lost their lives, their livelihoods. Uh, Bal Pendharkar lost his whole studio in Kolhapur. And about more than a thousand or so Brahmins were killed. So, 84 is not the first incidence of Congress's vengeful nature. 48 was the first one. Because Godis was a Brahmin, all the Brahmins were supposed to be killed. Sangli, Kolapur belt was the worst hit. Pune was also hit. And there are people who tell the story even now, some of them are alive. And there is some documentation available, very sparse documentation. So, that vicious, vengeful behavior was not something that happened in 84 only. And then there was uh, formation, then, then new organizations kept coming up after 48 when the, there was ban. So, Vakil Bharti Vidyadi Pashat came up. They conduct a wonderful program called Students uh, Experience Interstate Living, where students from North East are brought to main, uh, so called mainland or this part of Bharat. They stay with the families, they move around, they understand what Bharat is, what our nation is. Then people from here go to North East, they stay with them. So, they realize they are part of the same country. So, this various seva projects, school education programs, SCIL program, these are the programs happening in Northeast for the last 50 years have shown the result now. So, people who are impatient with these things, who feel that RSS kuch nahi karta, kuch hota nahi hai, kya kiya. One example of 50 years of dedication where many people lost their lives, many people actually sacrificed whole of their lives, went from Bombay, died there, doing work till their last stages in the age of 84-86. There is a very interesting story, I like to recount it. There is one uh, Bhaiya Ji Kane who went from Dombiwali, Mumbai to start a school. He was already retired. He started school in a place which is just two kilometers from Myanmar border in Nagaland. And he wanted to start the school and he wanted to bring some students to Mumbai to make them live in India for 10-12 years. So they go back as ambassador of India. They feel we are one part of India. But some people started, you know, telling people it's all poisonous. This guy will take and remove their kidneys. He will, you know, kidnap them. So, kya karna chahiye? So, he had a student with him called Jent. He said, hey, kaam karo, ye ko apne rakh lo. He told the boy, will he stay there? He said, I'll stay there. So, this young boy, Jent, stayed in Nagaland in that school. So, he brought students from Nagaland to Mumbai. And now, there are a lot of hostels in uh, Nasik, Pune, uh, Dombivali, where these North East students come and stay, take education. So, that Jent is still alive. And the Jent stayed in Dombivali. And he works for the same organization even now. So, it's the kind of sacrifice you don't even realize that has happened during all these years. 50 when Jansang was born, we know about Jansang. So, Shama Prasad Mukherjee sacrificed life for the, to remove Article 370 and uh, the constitution was made in such a way that Jammu Kashmir became a part of uh, Bharat. 50 when Bharati Majdu Sang was created, it changed the narrative by saying that Vishwakarma days are Labor Day. May 1 is not a Labor Day. So, uh, because Vishwakarma is our god for all the labor in India, uh, for all the Hindus and Bharatiyas. And then we had this, the first time uh, Dindya Lopate created this idea of Ekad Manav Darshan, where we created a new philosophy which was different from capitalism and socialism. Now, it's not, not time to go into detail, but basically both capitalism and socialism talk of material well-being only. They believe that a human being has no spirit, no atma, and no spiritual experiences. It just wants if you roti kapara de do, the banda khush rahega. Which is similar to treating a human being like an animal. So, this thought and means of production, who controls the means of production? Capitalism, the, the capitalist controls, controls the means of production, 
in socialism communism the state controls the means of production but the behavior all the interrelation between the human being and the society and the governance was missing that is what uh, dindayal upadhyay brought to fore many interesting thing uh, vivekananda rock memorial uh, it was conceived in 1962 when it was 100th year of vivekananda nobody is ready to support it bakta vatslam the chief minister refused to support it then ekan ranade was the general secretary of rss the senior was person he was relieved from his post asked to work for it he went and got sign of about 300 mps to support this move slowly it became a reality in 1967 it was inaugurated indira gandhi also went there and now they have vivekananda kendra where they train people in yoga and various other aspects and do a lot of research and the best part was only 1 rupee was taken one person i don't know how many people remember as they are very small at that time so 1 rupee coupon and 1 crore rupees were collected this way so imagine the effort the cadre level effort by rss and no big donation was allowed i talked about vishnu parishad uh, gauraksha abhiyan uh, first was 1952 uh, which was uh, done by majorly by sadhus in 66 there was signature campaign when 1.8 crore signatures were collected and this whole many uh, the whole signature uh, were handed over to the president and uh, uh, then there was we know there was uh, a, a huge firing and lot of hundreds of sadhus died in indira gandhi's time there was emergency uh, rss was the main force behind uh, defeating the emergency about 80% of the people who were uh, imprisoned were rss people top leaders but underground movement was running very well and uh, everybody was involved in a big way even misa detainees and next to rss were only akali dal and next to them was jai gurudev people all other organizations of course communist support emergencies so they were not there in the jail so this was the strength of rss and carried on for 19 months and when elections were declared nobody was ready to come on any booth so we as youth came on the booths and slowly turned the tide what we we called wave that was that is what we experienced in the real sense what is that you know wave it is because there was no social media no internet nothing but we just the people feeling on the road of what happened we took a cycle rally we said 50 60 60 log aa jayenge 100 log aa jayenge by the time rally ended it was thousands of bikes when we reached mithila bai college there was a huge crowd that we normally don't expect on a area when we already were 18 months of emergency and all the stalls also came there devana and all those people it was a rally we never expected when the results came we never expected to win this big but we stood the ground and finally we saw the result and then in 1983 there was minakshi puram where uh, a whole village became muslim so there is huge hue and cry including central government got alarmed everybody got alarmed and then what to do so there was an ekatmata yatra where all the saints were persuaded to come on the roads uh, there was ganga jal there was uh, bharat mata photo and there were four yatras across india there are about 600 yatras within those areas and about 8 crore people got connected and it was one of the biggest mass uh, movements done by anybody in india including rss and from there arose the ramjan bhumi movement next and we we know about ramjan bhumi movement many of us would know must have read about it so i'll not get into detail and 86 the ekal vidyalaya movement so there are a lot of things that changed during those 90 years of rss we don't really realize when you look at it uh, at one go as when many people believe that uh, rss is anti hindu anti muslim so guru ji said if there is no other religion when hindus were born how can be against anti anybody because we are talking of hindu society which is the early society so we cannot be anti anybody and we are just trying to do something for the nation and we are not against anybody and i come i'll come to the criticism that we hear i mean nobody takes up criticism up front i have taken up front in a book also so people say rss ne ek kuch nahi kiya mere azadi ki ladai mein i have a book now which is called the sang and swaraj released about two months back hindi came about two three weeks back where i given complete documentation about rss done as i talked about rss uh, uh, hedgewar went to jail in 1920 dr hedgewar a non cooperation movement again went to jail in 1930 in 20 congress session i talked about his uh, resolution of complete freedom which was not accepted and in 1930 dandi satyagraha sort satyagraha and uh, which was converted to janga satyagraha in uh, vidarbha and and again in 1930 when uh, full freedom was declared and it was decided to celebrate 26 january as the flag hoisting day dr hedgewar asked all the shakhas at that time there were 3 400 shakhas to hoist uh, national flag at that time national flag was bhagwa with small charkha in that at the, at the corner that was accepted as per the national flag committee of congress which was not accepted by gandhi ji and the whole flag changed 
but that is what he said uh, asked them to hoist and talk about uh, independence in 42 rss was there directly and also indirectly supported all the underground movement of 1942 uh, leaders who were who were escaping arrest uh, in there is famous chimu rashti satyagraha where there was patri sarkar made local government there was firing one swayam sak died on the spot two were uh, uh, two were given punishment hang to death then finally some hindu mahasabha person uh, was able to drop that charge and get them into imprisonment one sindhi swayam sak hemukalani was hanged in uh, in uh, after 1942 because he was trying to approve uh, railway tracks so they were in all everywhere in fact there is a story in a book where uh, swayam sak a big wrestler picked up uh, vasandada patel on his shoulder when he broke jail ran through jungles for nearly 2 hours finally took him to the railway station where he was supposed to escape the story was uh, told to me by mohanra bhagat i <laughs> given it my book so a lot of some things of course we know that 47 was not the end of the freedom struggle in 47 was the darkest day for millions of indians when partition happened millions of people left on the other side they were orphans of independence nobody paid any attention congress were busy celebrating and uh, making government uh, you know government formation nobody, nobody paid any attention so to all those people who had nobody to look after rss and military were the only two people who look after them that is also part of independence struggle uh, goa liberation Dadra Nagar liberation. Can you imagine? Till 66, they were still colonies in India. Pondicherry was colony in India. Nehru just never bothered. But when there was Satyagraha in Goa, he was very irritated. Nehru said, "Why are you trying to spoil relations with Portugal?" So all this happened, which was supported by RSS totally. And uh, so that story, all these stories are mentioned in my book. So enough of material for a organization which Nehru called "Chote Bachcho Ki Jamaat." Hai, kya karenge? That Jamaat did all this. The eldest person at that time used to be in the shaka around 24, 25 years old. In my book, I have a list of about 33 people meticulously made in hand by some gentleman. I don't know who the gentleman was in Amritsar who died in riots. How they died? Preparing bomb, cut cut by Muslim mobs. All those descriptions are given. It's in Hindi, but very very stark if you look at it. So there is enough. Unfortunately, we didn't have a bit of making documents. and once the book was released and a book was made and guruji was asked to release the book guruji refused then talking of 48 he said uh, if you are doing service to your mother you don't put it in newspaper and he told his wife said that see i am not louding you i am not louding your work or my work because this our duty there is no need to go to newspaper talk about all these things so that has become to ha- begun to haunt rss slowly now documents have been taken out that is the reason i got this book published of course are is fascist we talk about it so what is fascism basically is a political philosophy that suppresses people who have views different from established dominant thought of the rulers so you know who are the fascist rss constitution firmly believes in democracy there is no tolerance of violence if anybody is found uh, doing any violence he is thrown out of rss automatically we know the struggle of emergency to re- uh, restore democracy that rss has done and hindu way of life itself respects all the different opinions we are plural so there is no reason for us to be violent against any other thought and it has lost more volunteers in violence than any other political or social formation in india and lot of see our critics are stuck with one particular book of guruji para 37 or something some page number that guruji said blah 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 about minorities now guruji himself disowned the book later and he was not a senior office bearer at that time he said this book is no more relevant but even in worst case scenario what did he say he said that all minorities all other communities must follow the same law nobody will have any privileges they will not live as we live even if you are second class citizen it was not worse than what uh, semitic religions say so either you say semitic religions what they said was wrong that everybody is not same so either you are a believer in uh, islam or christianity or yadhimi so i have to either convert you or i have to throw you out of the society treat you as secondary citizen put jaji on you guruji said none of it but that was during the time when even hitler's role and all these uh, horrors of uh, jews were not even known and that book was disowned by guruji there's never republished by rss but that is the only book they quote then they quote bunch of thoughts surprisingly those are lectures given by guruji and trans- uh, written by somebody else but none of them has ever quoted complete works of guruji I have translated works of Guruji. There is not a single para you can find where he is aggressive against anybody. In fact, very openly say that 
you know everybody has same right to stay and by definition whether communism or islam or christianity they are actually christianity of course it deluded itself they are typically political ideologies which don't have any space for non believers so in a communist state any non believer has no right either is a right as second class citizen similarly for islamic uh, thought so if there is any fascism it lies in these ideologies not in rss ideology which basically be in hindus pluralism and if you look at how intellectuals are treated in india whether they have any space in literature academics anywhere all the top intellectuals that non left head were never found any space in uh, in uh, academic circles their books were removed or no, who were not even hindutvadi i am talking of rc majumdar jadunath sarkar their books are no more available now in history so new history has been created a castrated history and then we are told if you talk of rewriting history you are fascist but actually all we talk is giving right to the other thought there is gentleman sitting as sampat who actually has suffered the wonderful tolerance and democratic behavior of communists when his whole festival was taken away because he refused to sign a paper criticizing modi modi yeah Orbach. yeah so that is fascism we talk of minorities many people believe that savarkar is the ideologue of rss founder of rss i'm sorry rss was founded dr hedgeva nobody else savarkar's brother was part of rss for many years he was sangachalak of mumbai rss some part of it and savarkar was taken as a very influential person dr hedgeva met him but there was a lot of differences between hindu mahasabha and uh, uh, rss also 1930 rss refused to not take part in sar satyagraha hindu mahasabha wanted to boycott it dr munji was a guide and philosopher of dr hedgevar in fact he got him to become a, succeed in studies because hedgevar was a very poor family his parent had died but he refused to toe the line 42 they said should not join quit india movement rss joined quit india movement again they were nap and savarkar was so nap that once he said that epita of rss swayam sevak will return as he was born he became swayam sevak he died but only later when he saw the work of rss he realized that what uh, what rss has done and he respected rss after that but there are issues when we, we were not going together so another interesting thing is dr hedgeva never got into debate of what is hinduism what is hindutva what is hindu rashtra he would keep quiet keep on working he said whatever conventional definition i go by that so he went more for uh, you know uh, normal discussion like if you talk of minorities guruji has said in many interviews that they are inter- your ancestors are hindus 99% of uh, muslims and uh, nearly all the christians basically their parents were forefathers were hindus so their culture is hindu like we talk of indonesia and your faith is christian or islam that doesn't uh, you know keep you away from hindu stream it doesn't make you non hindu so culturally you are hindus and once you accept that you take pride in that we are all one there is no difference at all we have so many faiths two more faiths don't make any difference and all he said was there should be no exceptional privilege to minorities they should have same laws and i think which is nothing wrong in that and rss seniors also used to say that there are only two minorities parsis and jews who came from outside settled here very small in size and they had to be protected everybody else is part of this original uh, sanskriti and in fact during one of the discussions bala saheb they were openly said that if you believe you believe uh, bharat is a motherland you are hindu and you can join rss any time in fact there are rss pracharaks in fact one pracharak died just about one year back he was a muslim then he converted of many years converted to hinduism but he was a pracharak and he worked with uh, muslim rashtriya manch there are christian workers i met in kerala so there is but there is no flag there was a big uh, state meeting of rss where about 90000 people came and there was roza at that time so question was how many people are observing roza there are 200 people observing roza and special preparations are made for them so this again is a charat that is being said about people talk about democracy ch- demographic challenges uh, one of the earliest books to be published which talked about challenges of demographic transition was uh, rss uh, there is an organization in uh, chennai who published the book they were debunk they were they were you know a lot of criticism that you have people are alarmist and all that and time and again rss part resolutions about democratic changes in assam uh, in kashmir and all the alarmist views which are not accepted by people are slowly being accepted now so there is a real danger of democracy uh, demographic changes which can affect indian dem- democracy we already know that people are looking at only 50 seats where they can beg to 
minorities to vote so they can win some seats. In 10 years, they can be 100. So until we are able to nationalize what we call indigenize, uh, Indianize our minorities who think of India first, then of the religion, we will see a lot of problems. So we have to understand you cannot force anybody to have a certain kind of population policy. There has to be government policy and there has to be a way of conveying to all our people that nation comes first, whatever faith, that is the solution. And But this issue has been discussed by RSS everywhere, whether it's Assam, whether it's uh, Kashmir, whether it's Kerala. And we have to realize that slowly people are realizing about it. There is also a question, RSS and women, Rahul Gandhi made it famous. And in fact, in a TV debate, one of the very senior journalists, I'm surprised I can't give the name, he said, Sharda ji, I'm so proud of you, 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 I'm so proud of you. I said, good, you gave me a chance. Rashtra Sevika Samhiti was established in 1932. It was established by Maushi Kelkar, who was a widow lady, and he said something has been done, women have a big role to play. She came to Dr. Hedgevar and she asked to allow, you know, allow her to join RSS or make an organization. He said, see, I am a bachelor. I don't know how ladies work, what work they do. You make an organization, we'll help you in every way. So that is how Rashtra Sevika Samhiti works. A lot of support, whether intellectual inputs, physical inputs, in terms of training and all is given. And they work independently, their own uh, the seva cars and all that. And wonderful organization. Apart from that, as one of the senior workers said, that RSS, women are not in RSS shakhas. They are there in all the sangh work. Because if you now look at the whole presentation, RSS shakha is just one part of sangh work now. Lacks of organizations who are doing work, uh, hundreds of organizations which are doing work where women are welcome, where there is deliberate and conscious move to get more and more uh, women involved. And they are doing wonderful work. If you look at number of women who have succeeded in RSS affiliate organizations, it's much more than any other organization. Communist Party got its first Politburo member after eight years. And the lady happened to be wife of an office bearer. We have got women uh, promoted through their own quality, whether it's BJP, whether it's RSA, whether it's Vishindu Parishad. Nivedita, uh, uh, Mrs. Nivedita, Miss Nivedita is head of the Vivekanand Kendra now, Dr. Nivedita Bhide. And she is head of the Vivekanand Kendra now. Uh, then you have, uh, so we, we are giving a lot of involvement to our women. And of course, more women are related to join, but there is no prejudice against of any kind against RSS. In Shaka, the issue was that RSS had a very physical way of doing Shaka work. Games were very physical, whether it's Kabaddi or wrestling or whatever. It was thought that it may be right platform to get them together. So at that time, it was not so. We don't know now, for example, in uh, the RSS people who run their own uh, Hindu Swamsas outside India, they have a monthly gathering because they can't come together every day. In that monthly gathering, uh, all the families come together. Then women have one set of programs, men have one set of programs. Intellectual programs are done together. So these things will keep on happening, changes will keep on happening. And as I said, RSS has been always ready to make changes and go as per the requirement of the time. That is the reason it has survived and thrived all these years. So finally, what is the strength of RSS? Basically, selfless, selfless love. It is the sense of brotherhood with each other, sense of family. We are supposed to be walking into the kitchen of any home and uh, treat uh, his mother as my mother. And we have this deep sense of knowledge with the uh, love with each other and deep love for motherland. And selfishness without any expectation of return. None of the person in RSS who works expects anything in return. They know nothing will, they will gain nothing, they will lose. In fact, uh, Dr. Bhagwat recently said, oh, Kabira khada bajar mein. So jo, one who comes to RSS will lose something, will not gain anything except the satisfaction of doing something with the society. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much.